Hey friends, welcome back to the Intuitive Lens on YouTube. My name is Grace. You know, I'm learning as I do this. I'm learning living the tarot and learning through various cycles. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart, just a huge appreciation. I'm feeling a lot of gratitude today for having this space and the forum to talk to you guys, meet you guys, and receive, you know, your blessings. So I want to just give a quick shout out to Samantha, who watches the channel, is also a friend of mine. She gave me this book recently, Post-Colonial Astrology. I have been collecting a lot of books lately. This one is, um, this one in particular, I, I picked this up when I was going to be beginning, when I was just starting on this, on this journey, and it was a little um, thick. It's a, it's a, dense read. I'm ready to pick it up now. I also picked up this book here recently, Tarot for Change. Um, this is a great book for understanding the psychology and philosophies of the tarot and uh, for the modern world, honestly. So with that, I want to I wanna bring us to this week's astrology through this lens. And that is the reminder that this year, if you recall, is the year of the chariot. Because 2023, 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 7. And that's the chariot. The chariot is a card. Let me see if I can pull it up. Right. Well, they have the picture of it in this book. See, I took a bunch of no notes on here. I do want to go over sort of what this book says about the chariot because it's very interesting. This is the chariot. This is guy sort of, his legs are mounted in concrete and we have the two sphinxes sort of riding us forward. And we know the chariot is like a evolu personal evolution card, right? That's how I have been talking about it on this channel. But it's also known traditionally as the card of willpower. It's this idea that we can will ourselves into anything. And you, we see this a lot when we think about when we look at the way manifestation is talked about and we look at the way that um, we talk about mirrors in um, tarot and astrology in general, like relationships are our mirrors. They're showing us something. And if there's a problem in your relationship, then it's probably you. You know, Do you know what I mean? And you can will yourself to see things a certain way. And to an extent, that's true. Like I really appreciate... And like studying holographic mind principles, draw yourself a cube, you know, draw yourself a cube and then will your mind to see the front and the back face, identify them for yourself and then switch them. Okay, I think that our perspective has a lot to do with what we create in life because it feeds, it fuels behavior. But what I appreciated from this Tarot for Change book, the way that the chariot is talked about, is that internal struggles, for example, are not necessarily, um, you can't, how do I say this? You can't address internal struggles with willpower. There are just some things in life you can't control. And the book talks about what do we do when we fail? Right? And so I'm looking at it from this way. Well, either you've had certain expectations, right? When we manifest, we set a goal for ourselves to visualize. But then we let it go. We let it go in the scheme of like this or something better. There seems to be this dichotomy of like tension and release in manifestation work. And the chariot is so much about barreling forward and and winning at all costs. That the chariot doesn't leave room for failure. And inevitably we fail, right? And this week is not about failure. That's not what I want to talk about. But I just wanted to bring that perspective um, here because we still have a few months left in the year. And this week, primarily the energy that we're working with is the new moon in Virgo. And Virgo is a really beautiful sign to be working with at this time while reflecting on these ideas of the chariot which color our whole year 
Virgo rules the sixth house of health service assessment. It's our day-to-day -day routine. It's our work. It's our jobs. It's how we take care of our bodies. Um, it's also the voice of our inner critic, if you will. New moon is a time for beginning a new cycle and setting new intentions. And Virgo really wants us to slow down and go through things sort of with a fine tooth comb. Pay attention to the sensation in your body as you move through your life during this time. What's happening is we're assessing things for what is falling away, what do I want to adjust, what do I want to bring into my life, what do I want to cultivate. And so my one advice for this Newman and Virgo is whatever you do, do it well and slow down enough to enjoy the process. It's all about the process and not about the end destination. We think a lot about the end destination and not enough about the process. Enjoying the process of what you do to me also means being new at something. What we're doing is we're trying to remove our preconditioning. What was it that you left behind two weeks ago with the full moon in Pisces? Because right now we're crossing over with this lunation in the new moon in Virgo, we're crossing over between the full moon in Pisces and the full moon in Aries, between the 12th and the first houses. This is a chance to be totally brand new at something. Totally brand new. And this can this is a very deeply healing period of time. And I'll just say, you know, you get to choose what you bring with you. At the same time this week, Mercury is stationing direct. We've been paying extra attention to our health, our day-to-day -day routines and the like. With the sun aspecting Uranus, this brings the energy of a pleasant surprise, like something unexpected. I feel that intuition and excitement are big themes this week. You can trust your intuition these days, especially if you're slowing down and paying attention to the sensations of your body and using that as information for you to eat better, move your body in a way that feels nourishing, um, establish healthy boundaries for yourself with whatever that means. And then finally, over the weekend, Venus is square Jupiter. And while square is typically a challenging aspect, Venus and Jupiter have an interesting effect together. This is about the value of fun. We have surprise, we have fun. So, you know, I think ultimately this is about taking things a little bit lightly. This is about expanding our definitions of well-being that isn't so always so like uh, self-critical. Do you know what I mean? How many of us have have been like, oh, I know I need to move more and exercise more. And there's this energy behind it that's like, I'm failing. <laughs> you know, no, I think this is, we, look, we got to make things fun to the extent that we are embracing this energy of gratitude and vivaciousness, vivaciousness for life. So if your goal, for example, is to exercise more, how do you make it fun? Do dance, do something that's social with other people and make that a part of your day to day. Really commit to it, you know, set that intention, really commit to it. What needs to fall away in order for you to commit to something that you truly, really want? The chariot, um, Tarot for Change on the chariot says, we must cry for what we want. It's quoting somebody. Robert Bly writes, always cry for what you want and and take it to heart. You know, there's something here about like really go for what you want. Spend this this new moon in Virgo is is a way for us to begin calling in that which we truly desire by starting from within ourselves and seeing and noticing what is within us that wants to be released or what is within us that wants to be cultivated. And the last thing I'll say is next weekend, um, so, you know, 15, 16, 17, it's a really good weekend for socializing, learning, uh, and making friends overall. So I hope that you're able to find some expression in that way. I'm going to pull out the cards now. We're going to do a tarot reading. See what is good for the collective. This is a general reading, so the whole thing may not resonate, but there might be even just a message for you in it, within it. So if you vibe with it, I hope that you leave a comment. 
like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, or even share it. Sharing it does a lot. Share it on Facebook. Oh, and the channel reached a milestone recently. Last week, I got my first thumbs down. To that I say thumbs up, man. That's good, people are having opinions. It means I'm, I'm actually saying some. So, thank you for voicing your preference. I will keep doing what I do. Um, today I'm also gonna pull an Oracle card from Animal Spirit Guides. I've been called to pull work with the animals a lot more lately. I did a animal oracle card pull for myself, so I'm gonna do one for you. And the last thing I'll say, and then we'll start pulling cards, is next Saturday, the 16th, September 16th, I'm doing an online astrology workshop. If you've been interested in getting to know your natal chart a little bit better, I am here to demystify the whole process of how to look at your chart. So if you would like to walk away with a greater understanding of what it even means, how to look at it, how to find information um, in it based on the experiences that you're having, I will be happy to do that for you. So uh, message me or use the link in the description box below to sign up for that. And again, that's this Saturday at 10 a.m. online. Here we go. Oh, very light cut today. Nine of Wands. This is all coming from the cards underneath. Seven of, uh, sorry, Five of Swords in reverse. That's great. And the Seven of Swords in reverse, actually. It was both. So, not gonna lie, I see some avoidance here. Um, this might have to do with work. There, okay, this is a very specific message for somebody. And it's coming in fast. So, there's... Um, thank you so much. This has to do with somebody's work. A pattern, there might be like a really um, overbearing boss or somebody who's just sort of extremely controlling. Um, and, and this is a thing that is coming up a lot. And it doesn't have to be with work, but I see the Eight of Pentacles, which is the work card. You know, the Emperor is in reverse here. Um, even if it's not like an, a controlling person, maybe this is more of an internal thing. So, you know, this could resonate with, with you if you're experiencing that the way you've been manifesting lately is by wanting to have control over every aspect of how things fit into place versus like going with the flow. But something I also see here is this, like, you don't, this desire to like not see hierarchies or conflict like you're not here to establish yourself as some um, somebody more important I actually see the opposite is happening I, I think that there's some issues of self-worth or self-deprecation or un, rather unworthiness and actually this controlling aspect might be you keeping yourself small in some way you're saying if I can buy I'm this feels like biting off exactly as much as you know how to chew. You know the saying, biting off more than you can chew. It's uh, what we say when we've taken on too much and now we're, our hands are full and we're maybe having challenges, growing pains, or we need help. In order to avoid discomfort, asking for help, or growing pains, you know, to, in order to avoid this kind of conflict or discomfort, we're keeping ourselves in control, in steady. We're not really in flow. We're, we're growing just at the perfect capacity to stay comfortable. And what's happening, this is, this is showing pattern, and this is, show, you know, nine of uh, wands is something I associate deeply with patterning and conditioning. This is something that we're hoping a pattern that we're hoping to work with to understand just how we have created the things in order in an orderly fashion in our life. So if you're expecting a miracle to come in and you're behaving in this preconditioned way, 
in regards to how you approach work, for example. I see work here a lot. But it doesn't have to be about work. It could, be, it could even just be a hobby because the, the Eight of Pentacles is just about like working on your skills, working on yourself as well. Anyways, let's uh, keep going. Ha ha. You telling me I cut it right on the chariot? Chariot in reverse. This is stuckness. What is keeping us stuck? Is it because we've had a, too specific a vision for what we wanted to create? Perhaps. This may have to do with relationships. This is the Three of Cups in reverse. Three of Cups is saying where we thought there would be revelry. There actually is not. So let's see what this is actually about. Um, why aren't we celebrating? Stuckness again. Eight of Wands in reverse. Knight of Cups. Truth leading your heart. This is about authenticity. Okay. So what I'm seeing here, a Queen of Pentacles, now in the center. What I'm receiving here is that truth really breaks the mold here. I feel like we have to be really honest about, look at that. Honesty does cultivate gratitude, doesn't it? Doesn't it? If we're honest about the ways that like, this is, Queen of Pentacles in reverse, this is about work-life balance. This is simply put about things not feeling balanced within the body. And what was I saying earlier about Virgo? This new moon in Virgo is about pay attention to how your life is currently structured. What are all the things that you are telling yourself you must do in order to be where you want to be? Or have what you want to have? You know, I do personally feel a sense of simplification, really wanting to get down to the, not just the root cause, but sort of reducing things to their essence to understand how they're working on our bodies. The body keeps a score of everything. If you feel tension in certain parts of your body, if you catch yourself holding your breath, if you're fidgeting, what is all of this telling you? There's the Seven of Cups, Queen of Cups, there we go. There we go. And the higher font. Look, 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 look. I feel like the message is pretty clear. This is about cultivating inner awareness. Absolutely. We talked about it with the chariot, about how willfulness or, or willpower is not effective for inner development or inner conflict. If we can't get ourselves to do the thing, let's take my example from earlier. I can't get myself to exercise every day or every other day or once a week. That is an internal thing. That's like something you control. Do you know what I mean? And willpower, willpower does work on the things that only you can control, but there's something deeper here. There's something under the surface. We can only find out once we tune in. And the Hierophant here at the end, this is Taurus. Again, we're seeing a lot of Taurus showing up in this in this Virgo season. Um, I also see, by the way, Cancer, Aries. Yeah, Cancer, Aries, Taurus uh, within the majors. But we have also have a lot of Queen energy. So this is an issue issue of nurturance. And what are we nurturing? It's a mindset. It's a mindset of gratitude. It's getting closer to understanding what it is that we want by tuning in. I see a little bit of confusion here, and this, this may resonate for some people, but if there is a lot of confusion, it's because what you want to do and what you're doing, who you are, isn't exactly like everything else or everybody else around you. So please do not compare yourself to anybody else at this time. The new moon in Virgo is really finding out about what special gift do you have? Because Virgo is also about service. How do you show up for others, for your community, for yourself even? This is about your special gifts. And it is a time to really focus on your health, I will say. 
your health, your day-to-day -day routines, how are you taking care of yourself and those around you, and you know all aspects of life, your job, your family, things like that. Finally, let's grab a animal, spirit animal guide. This is from, this is this, this, ter this oracle deck is literally called Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides Oracle Cards. Okay? Okay. Please give us uh, an animal. Please give us an oracle to see which animal spirit is with us this week. Who can we rely on to lend us their gifts? Who is in service to us this week? Just one, please. Any time would be great. All right, I guess I'll pull it. Interesting. It was the only reversed card. Dog. Your loyalty and faithfulness is misplaced by serving too many masters. Oh. I'm going to read this card for you. Dog. Your loyalty and faithfulness is misplaced by serving too many masters. Whom do you serve is the question at hand here. When you compromise your personal integrity through misguided attempts to placate others out of fear of their disapproval or to avoid upsetting them, you deny your own inner authority and give away your power. You become their servant, and they your masters. You allow this by assuming that another person or organization has greater knowledge, power, or spiritual wisdom than you, and you put yourself in a less than position. While others may possess some of these attributes to a greater degree than you do, you can honor them as teachers, not masters. Children may rightly look at their parents for this sort of guidance. However, as they mature, it's appropriate that the leash to their parents' authority stretches and is eventually severed. The human error is to continue to project this parental authority onto other people and institutions, and then either subjugate their will or act in opposition to that perceived authority. Over a number of years, you may find yourself attached to the leashes of many masters, leading you to feel fragmented and, to some degree, powerless. Instead, take off all of those collars and let spirit be your true master. Then you will experience true freedom. Associations of the dog, protectiveness, faithfulness, loyalty, unconditional love, forgiveness, service, helpfulness, instinct, companionship, sensitivity, domesticity, playfulness, and guidance. I don't think I could have picked a better card here for this reading. There's a lot of uh, overlap, right? Service, instinct. We talked about the importance of intuition this week. Sensitivity, feeling into your body. Hmm. And forgiveness, you know, I'll say in, in this five of cups that's in the reverse, you know, in order to turn this back upside down, or sorry, you know, to come out of this, to process the five of cups energy, I'll say, one must forgive themselves for looking too long at that which has not been working, holding on for too long, okay, or giving their power away. You can do this. You can do this. I want to say thank you so much for joining me this week and every week that you are here. Thank you. Hope to see you at the natal chart workshop this Saturday. Otherwise, I've got the recommended listening for you down in the description box below. Take care and I'll see you next time.